Problem 5. Summation n is equal to 1 to infinity of n squared over 5n cubed plus 4. We are trying to determine whether this series is absolutely convergent, conditionally convergent, or absolutely divergent, which means we have to test the positive series and the alternating series. So we're going to start with the positive series, which is what I always do first. So part A, we're going to do a limit comparison test on the positive series. Part B, we're going to compare to the summation of 1 over n, which is a p-series, where the power is 1, which is less than or equal to 1, and 1 over n diverges. So we're looking at the series that it's similar to. We're comparing it to the p-series 1 over n. Now we find the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n, our known p-series, over n squared over 5n cubed plus 4. We do the flip-flop of the fractions. We get the limit as n approaches infinity of 5n cubed plus 4 over n cubed, which is equal to 5. And we know that 0 is less than 5 is less than infinity, or in words, 5 is positive and finite, which means that the series n squared over 5n cubed plus 4 diverges just like 1 over n does. But remember, we are only half done. We have found out that the positive series diverges, we now need to look at the alternating series. So looking at the alternating series, summation n is equal to 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the nth. You could also have negative 1 to the n plus 1, doesn't matter. We're just trying to determine whether the alternating series converges or diverges of n squared over 5nq plus 4. And this is a relatively long test. We have con three conditions to test. Condition 1 being is the limit as n approaches infinity of n squared over 5n cubed plus 4 equal to 0, and that's a yes. Condition 2 is, is n squared over 5n cubed plus 4 greater than 0, and that's a yes because our series starts off at 1, 2, 3, 4. So those two are relatively easy to test. Condition 3, on the other hand, is a little bit more difficult. We're going to check the n plus 1 term and compare it to the nth term and see if the n plus 1 term is smaller than the nth. So taking your series, you're replacing n squared with n plus 1 squared. Down below, a little bit more complicated, you have a 5, you erase the n, replace it with n plus 1, cube that, and add 4, and ask yourself the question, is that smaller than n squared over 5n cubed plus 4? And that's quite a mess. When the algebra gets difficult, I choose to check the derivative. All we need to do is check if the derivative is less than 0. So looking at our function, f of n is equal to n squared over 5n cubed plus 4, we're going to find the derivative, which is a quotient rule, which is an, an easy one, but I think it's easier than the algebra. So the derivative f prime of n is equal to, on the bottom I have the 5n cubed plus 4 quantity squared. On the top you have the 5n cubed plus 4 times the derivative of the top, which is 2n, minus n squared, which is the top, times the derivative of the bottom, which is 15n squared. Doing some simplifying, we have the derivative equaling 10n to the fourth plus 8n minus 15n to the fourth over the quantity of 5n cubed plus 4 squared. Now we then simplify that to get negative 5n to the fourth plus 8n over that 5n cubed plus 4 squared. Is that less than zero? Well, the bottom is always positive, so we just have to check the top, and we find out if we use an n greater than 1, that will always be less than zero, and we just need to find some n that will make this true, and it is true. So now we have that the alternating series, negative 1 to the nth, n squared over 5n cubed plus 4, converges since all three conditions were met. We discovered before that the positive series diverged by the limit comparison test, so this series has conditional convergence.